Welcome to the State of the Nation. I'm your host, Mike Shan. Joining us today, Charles Saliers from the Patriotic Alliance. Charles, welcome to the State of the Nation. Good to have you here. Thanks, Mike. Good to be here. I've been chasing after the Patriotic Alliance for a while to get somebody to, to join us for a wee while. I was even having Gaten returning my calls, but never quite uh, got him uh, here. You never know. Maybe. We live he's, in hope. He's an elusive big fish with the media interviews. Now that he's not the mayor yeah. of Central Karoo. Or Joburg. Well, that's probably another discussion, but uh, he has more time now. Yes. And he's preparing for the campaign now next year we're looking at elections i guess in august mm -hmm. so there's a big lead in now and he's focusing pretty much all of his efforts on that so i'm sure he'll uh, be coming on the show well certainly a big focus on what we're doing is to talk about the build-up to the elections uh, you know i don't think anything I, I think every bit of discussion in south africa over the next year is going to hinge is going to be form part of electioneering whether the person wants to or not it's it's a big part of uh, of uh, the south african story and uh, you know we hope to uh, to to bring a lot of that discussion to the public because you're not going to get it with the, from the sabc you're not going to get it from mainstream media so it's, it's platforms like this yeah i agree with you look politics is not everything right, right. but everything is political yeah unfortunately yeah. because we live in this country yeah, as they, what's the, the saying? If you're not interested, don't worry about whether you're interested in politics or not. It's politics is interested in you. Very interested in you. You're right. Now, Charles, give us a, a very quick story. You always have to, sadly. Um, I think we know the reason why, but uh, tell us about uh, you and the Patrick, Patriotic Alliance. So my background is a uh, student of the arts, actually. I started as a uh, creative writing student under James Katsio back in the day. And I met this extraordinary man in the middle of doing that, uh, dissert well, it's not a dissertation, you actually write a novel collection of poetry or whatever it is. And I met this extraordinary man, he was like a week out of prison, and his name was Gayton McKenzie. And he had this incredible life story, and I had had no intention of doing politics or current affairs or, or biographies of real people. And my boss at the time, who was working uh, in Blum, we met in Blum. He was in prison in Hrutfle Maximum Security Prison, which is in Blum. And uh, the lady I was working for, uh, Ria de Villiers, she owned a, a school book publishing company. And I was working there to pay my way through uh, my studies. And she said, you must meet this guy. He's, he's incredible. And she was helping him to give back to society because he came out of jail and he said what, what he wants to do is go to schools and give motivational talks to uh, kids throughout South Africa because he felt that that would be maybe the first step for him to show that he's serious about changing his life. And it was a really good first step. And uh, I met him and I said, you've got a great life story and you should write a book about it. And he said, yeah, look, what does he know about writing a book? And I said, well, I've never done it either, but we became really good friends and it took us three years and uh, we published the book and it was a, a bestseller. It, the, it was called The Choice, The Gates and McKenzie Story. Uh, as told to me, and it it sold tens of thousands of copies. I mean, actually, I can't even tell you what the number is. But uh, we made our first, basically, millions out of it. And um, from there, we just decided to, to stick together. And we've worked together at times. I've gone back to the media at other times. I've worked for City Press. I've, I've been an editor at The Citizen. I ran The Citizen's uh, website for about four years. And uh, at during COVID ep epidemic, uh, I just decided that um, I need to go back full time with Gayton and the PA and uh, went and worked in city of Johannesburg, took a position there in one of the political offices. And that's been the story for me of the past three years. It's just been a lot of full time engagement with the PA. Um, and I could never really um, not be part of the PA because I was one of the three people that started the PA 10 years ago. It was myself, Gayton and uh, the deputy president of the PA, Kenny Kunene, who's now also in the city of Johannesburg. He's MMC for transport. Yeah, so and that's the story in brief. Um, I, I, I think the three of us are very different, but we complement each other and we've always been, uh, somehow the three of us together just works. So let's pick up on, on one of the things that you said there, which is, uh, you know, you're obviously uh, the first sort of business venture, as it, as it were, was the book. Is the Patriotic Alliance just another business? 
I think that one of the things I said to Gayson once when we were traveling on a campaign tour is that he was, uh, he's, he's got an incredible energy. You know, he's one of the most exuberant people you'll ever meet. And we, we went through a phase where he was doing one thing after the next. And it was like, we're now doing an events company. We've got nightclubs. We're now doing mining consultancy. Oh, we've, we own our own mine. You know, it was uh, the seafood, logistics, frozen fish. You know, there are so many businesses. I, th I think w if I have to do a list of all the different be business ventures that, that he was pursuing, we, even, we did big concert promotions. Um, I, think, I think he was getting bored with just making money at one point. Because for him, making money is not hard. Uh, he's got a gift at it. He's a really good business person. He's got a great business brain. But I think he reached a point where he got bored of just making money. And what the Patriotic Alliance was, was an actual big departure from business for him. Because in 2013, kids were getting shot in crossfire uh, at an alarming rate in Mannenberg in particular, but throughout the Cape Flats in Cape Town. And he was called in to, to mediate a peace because they said, you know, Gaten, you've, you've been away from the gangster life now for 10 years, but you still have some moral authority with the gangs. And he eventually couldn't turn his back on what was happening for, for much longer. So he said, no, that's fine. He'll go and he'll talk to the warring gangs and see if he can mediate a peace because the kids were dying. And in the process of that, it, it became clear that the socioeconomic and socio-political uh, framework or, or circumstances that people are living in in the Cape Flats as one example shows you that politically we failed our uh, society and that the existing parties actually don't have an answer to what really ails this country. And I think that fed into uh, what became an increasing commitment that he had, uh, an, in an increasing sense that he had uh, call it an inspiration, that he should start his own political party that will actually go in there and deal with what really drives a young kid to go and become a gangster and shoot another young kid. Because at the end of the day, the answer is in how you're governing the country. The answer is not anything other than the political framework that we're all living in. So you have to actually change the bigger picture to deal with the small problems. So what happened with Gayton is I think he's poured almost all of his personal wealth into this um, this vision that he has, uh, this calling that he has to grow the party uh, and to and to gain political power. And next year we've got the elections, and he's serious about the fact that he's willing to to stand as president, whether he becomes president or not, who knows, right? But why do this if you are not serious about the fact that you could do that job and you're willing to do that job and you feel that you can do it better than anybody else and we're doing that because not because we're trying to make money this party has has only taken money from us and we're self-funded we don't take funding from the usual suspects that fund political parties so um it's a good question but what this party is is the exact opposite of a business but now, in, in what you just said, you, you, you kind of posed it as a question, and I may give a few potential answers. Why would you do this? One of the reasons you may do this is because there's budgets worth billions with a B. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? And we, we've just come from, uh, still live in an era where a political party is all about the budgets with a B, right? So, you know, um, I'm trying to see, because a lot of the statements seem to be, especially around local government, always seem come to come back to the portfolios that have big budgets involved. Which portfolios don't have big budgets? Well, they all do, but yet the, these, um, much of the coalition issues, we'll go into that in greater detail, seem to always be around uh, MMC positions controlling budgets. Do you know what I mean? I'm saying this is where the Patriotic Alliance always seems to stick, is around the money. Gayton's been brilliant at, f at putting this as a, either a personal slur or a personal problem that he has, 
or um, you know some kind of high-minded sort of uh, issue, the you know matter of principle, but it always comes back to managing the portfolios that manage the money. So when the DA is in government, like they are in Cape Town, mm. they have MMCs yes. that oversee but billions in budgets. Yeah. When they like now we see in Chwane, mm -hmm. they've got MMCs there that oversee billions in budgets. Why are we not alarmed about that? Because they've uh, they're a well established political party. This does so is the ANC. Yes. But the Patriotic Alliance looks to be set up just as a business. Same people that have set up businesses across a whole lot of industries. And this looks like, you know, Donald Trump take two. <laughs> you know, he has a guy who runs a couple of businesses. Well, he has the ultimate business. I'll run the, you know, the government. And at very worst, he's probably going to get more tenders afterwards should he opt out of politics. It's hard not to see that connection, so, surely. So you say Gayson is going to get more tenders? I'm saying there's absolutely no doubt that in, let's just say he gave up uh, his political career tomorrow. Okay. He's a great BE partner, isn't he, for, for anybody. I mean, you know, uh, all I'm saying is this does these business interests in our no, it's just an and interest, it's, it's an it's interesting statement that you've made that he would get more tenders. Yes. When has he ever had one tender? How did he get a mine? He's never had a tender in his life. But he did have, uh, he did become a shareholder for his, one would imagine for his influence, not for his mining ability. He bought them with his own money. So this is definitely not, a, not just another business with big budgets. How could a political party be a business? It can be. Um, hey, go ask uh, our ex-president Zuma. Go ask half the cabinet that had been fingered in, in, uh, in the state capture. Um, I'm saying it's, it's, a, it's a very easy way to put yourself it's in, the, in the, the middle of some very, very big uh, amounts of money. Mike, I just don't see you asking anyone in, for example, Action SA hmm. or the DA. Um, the same questions. Why are you not asking them that question? Because now you're saying that because the DA is a more established party. I'm Action SA has not been around for as long as we have, and you're not asking them that question. Uh, the, the ANC is the most established party in yes. the country and you're not asking them that oh, question. Oh, I'd love to ask them that question but, but w all I'm saying is that there is no question, there can be no question by now that the roots of the ANC, let's start there, right? Not a fan but the roots, <laughs> right? Yeah. Go back to a, a legitimate political movement, let's put it that way, okay? Okay. It, it feels... Um, that uh, the emergence of the Patri Patriotic Alliance and the behavior of the Patriotic Alliance seems to be about as far away as doing good for communities as what you can get. On what do you base that? I base that on their behavior within certain of these ailing uh, um, uh, metros where they have had influence. Uh, on the one hand, I keep on hearing wonderful speeches from Gayton, who's a hell of an engaging guy, love to have him sitting here, uh, saying how he's, we've got to cut out some of the stuff that's gone on. It's really bad. It's really this. And here he is empowering the ANC to stay in power. I don't understand it. The two don't align. And one eventually can say, why would you do this if not for gain? Now, and I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you an example. I'd have I'm really trying to understand your Okay, I'm, your I'm looking at it from a totally different, uh, you know, similarly. One can't look at some of these small parties that are around, right? Al Jamar, even Bantu Alamisa, all these people, these parties don't even have names anymore. They just have one person. There's no doubt they're running it because it's their business. It's a, it's a, it's a mom and pop shop. They're doing it for their own salary at the end of the month, right? Okay. So I'm saying that this is a well-trodden line where people say, you know what, we can get in, tell people it's for policies. In actual fact, there's no real attempt to grow, but at least I'll get one seat in Parliament. I'll earn two million rand a year and I won't do too much and try and hope that the cameras don't catch me falling asleep. I'm saying they're not doing that for the best interests of the country because they're not serving their electorate. Look at what COPE is doing. They're not helping the country one way or the other. Okay, so I'm saying this idea of 
starting a political party as a business has already got some traction in this country, right? And here you've got established business people doing it in what seems to be a far more professional way, but it's looking to me like the same outcome, that what you've got is Patriotic Alliance doing this not for the interest of anybody who's supporting them, but doing it uh, you know, because this could potentially be a wonderfully good business. All right, so I'm just trying to, in my own words, try and paraphrase what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? Where I think that you're saying that people are starting it as a business. When you talk mm. about the smaller parties, yeah. it sounds like what you're saying is that people are doing it for personal benefit. There's no doubt. Which, which is not the, quite the same as saying that you're doing it as a business. Mm, I can't see the difference between personal benefit and a business. I'm saying... I mean, know, a business is... I mean... You know, far be it from me to define what a business as, is. As a commercial enterprise. But if a that business makes it is something where better. you're selling a service or a product. Yeah, your product can be yourself. I'm, I'm, all, all I'm saying is that this does not look like uh, any of the wonderful speeches that Gaten gives. And he's a very engaging guy and he can certainly work the room. Yeah, but, and, but I you was listening to his, to his interview that he did recently with uh, Times Live. And yeah, yeah, the guy wants to make the country a better place and he's slamming the government and he's do, saying all these things. And then I'm looking at the actions and I'm saying, something doesn't marry here. But the actions that you're saying you find objectionable. Mm -hmm. Can we narrow it down? Because you're saying, are oh, you doing these horrible things? Yes. What are these horrible things? The horrible things are that, uh, for example, um, you can't say, surely, it may, there's no logic in saying, that we've got a corrupt government that doesn't govern in the interests of our population and this was broken and that's not working, et cetera, et cetera, and then vote with them to keep them in power in places like Johannesburg. Okay, so your contention, mm. I mean, it's, this is nothing new to me. I mean, mm. I've heard this before. So your contention, just maybe it's better if, you, if we go with simple yeses or noes here for my own clarity, right? mm. but your contention is that we should allow the DA to mm. treat us any way they like. And let me finish. But are you saying that we as the PA should allow the DA to treat us any way they like on the basis that they are not the ANC? Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm saying at all, no. Because what happened there is we had grounds to terminate our relationship in a coalition with the DA. And that leaves you with fewer options. And then you have to make a government. And far be it from me to tell people who to vote for. Mm -hmm. But the most people in Joburg voted for the ANC. At the moment, they've got 90 seats in council. They had 91 at the time that we changed the coalition. The DA has 71. Now, far be it from me to tell people who to vote for. But if you're going to make a government, you have to work with someone. And we as the PA has always said, we will work with anyone. Mm. And that includes the ANC and any other party. Mm. Now, but the problem that I have with what you're saying is that if we work with anyone, that we must then inherit the sins and the crimes of whoever it is that we're working with. And you would posit the position that the DA, and I'm sorry if this sounds like, uh, um, like, like a pun, but that the DA is lily white and that the DA has nothing to answer for, despite the fact that we know that there's a 10 billion rand audit finding against Chwane, which the DA has more or less run uninterrupted since 2016. So now we must be told that you must work with the DA because they are the good ones. And you must not work with the ANC because they are the bad ones. Mike, I'm sorry to say, but South Africa is a little bit more complicated than that. Right. Now, that's what you hear. That's not what I'm saying. What are I'm, you saying? What I'm saying is that there's a big difference between working with the DA, right? Or the DA. Let's leave the DA out of this. What I'm saying is if the stated aim of the Patriotic Alliance is to rid this country of the ANC. That's got, not. Where did we make that stated claim? Uh, if you go listen to his interview, he, it, it's a diatribe of anti-ANC. And I'm listening to this and I'm thinking to myself, my word, and here's the guy who's actually 
putting them back into... Have you noticed any of his diatribes against the DA? Yeah, plenty. Oh, okay. But then, then if that's the case, then abstain. Where does that leave us? It leaves us somewhere, but at least it doesn't make you looking like you're supporting one or the other. Look, there's... Oh, so we there's should a, get into politics to abstain from participation. No, well, I'm, well, that's your suggestion. No, my suggestion is let's not empower the people that have created the problem in the first place. Okay. Right, is, is what I'm saying. I, I don't see that as being progressive. I don't see the step of what is happening here in Johannesburg and uh, as being progressive. And here, I am not for one minute punting the DA. I'm saying that if, if the problem is to, to take away the power from the ANC, right, then do it. Okay, so you're saying that the right thing to do as an emerging political party is to do what Action SA is doing because they have stated from day one that they will not work with the ANC. You're saying that that's the correct approach. I'm saying that why should anybody vote for the Patriotic Alliance and not the ANC right now? Why, why would you vote for the ANC? Well, people are. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that if you want to vote for the ANC, I mean, yes. this is what I always say to people. If you like what the ANC is doing, then feel free and go and vote for the ANC. Yes. And you will get more ANC. And you'll probably get very similar things to what we've had for the past 30 years. If you like what the DA is doing, mm-hmm. go and vote for the DA. Yeah. If we thought that the ANC was doing a great job, or the DA was doing a great job, then the people in this party would have probably carried on doing what they were doing and voting for the DA and voting for the ANC. Gayton and Kenny would probably have continued to fund the ANC Perhaps if they really liked what the DA was doing, they may have funded the, the DA, may have joined the DA. All of us could have been in either of these parties, but we didn't do that. We started our own party. And when you vote for the PA, you vote for the PA. You do not vote for some sort of proxy thing that it's either that the PA is now a proxy vote for the ANC or a proxy vote for the DA or whatever it is. We are fiercely independent. And when you vote for the PA, what you get is the PA. And the PA will work with whoever wants to work with the PA in any municipality, provided that we are allowed to govern. Now, to the extent that you're able to govern in a coalition, that's determined by the compromise of the deal that you come with. But to be in a coalition, to be told that you should behave precisely the way that the big brother in the coalition behaves, completely uh, obliviates the identity of your own party and we will never allow that so we have to be allowed to be the PA and Mike honestly I do take exception to your view that the PA do- has done nothing for anyone right that that this is all about certain individuals in the party and it shows me that you've done zero research into this party it is a community-based organization that does that has massive grassroots support. We have, at this point, over 350,000 members. And at the heart, in the DNA of the PA, is community servant leadership. And people are going out, they're cleaning their communities for themselves, they have a can-do spirit. There is no sense of entitlement from anyone in the PA for a handout. It's about looking for a helping hand at the end of your own arm. And that is the spirit that we foster, promote in the PA, and everyone in the PA understands that that's what it means to be in the PA, that you are fiercely independent, you stand up for yourself, and you fix your own community. Now, the difference between us and anyone else in government is that we focus on service delivery and making a real tangible change. Now, look at what Gayton did as the mayor of the Central Karoo. He went in there, it was the one of the most broke municipalities in the country. There wasn't any money to do anything. So he promised he's going to eradicate bucket toilets within his first 100 days. He said he would fix two municipal pools. Then there was, there was the matter of water. They, they found asbestos. You know, I mean, mm. you've seen yeah, it, right? I mean. The changes that he brought in that community with basically no money and... I mean, the moment that the corrupt officials were removed, yes. suddenly there was money to pay Eskom. Mm. And they went from having a massive deficit and an overdraft 
and not being able to pay ESCOM to paying eight, 10 million rand a month. Suddenly, the revenue collection went from something like 45% to over 70% because people are suddenly willing to start paying mm. when they can see the money is going to where it's supposed to go. So I do have a concern that, that there's this myth that's, that's out there that you know the PA is just for a handful of select leaders and it doesn't take into account that we actually have branches throughout the country. There's leaders at every level in the party. This is actually becoming an incredibly established party. We're not strong in Limpopo and Mpumalanga, and increasingly we are getting stronger in KZN. But in the rest of the country, the PA is big and getting bigger, and it's one of the fastest growing parties. And that is not happening through a system of patronage, which is what you were trying to talk about earlier. No, I wasn't talking about patronage. I think it is. I, w I wasn't talking about patronage because I, I, that's would, how the I, would, I, would, I would immediately agree 100% is you can accuse, the, we can sit and debate the, the, the PA in depth. Um, there's no evidence of, be, of it running a patronage system. Because right? well, we don't. Right. But let's talk about some of, your, uh, some of the, the policies and what people would be getting you know, with their support of the PA. Um, where does the PA stand officially on the Constitution? As a political party that contests elections under the banner of the IEC, we support the Constitution. But yet Gaten McKenzie said that he would scrap the Constitution. So I am not going to, to say that we don't support the Constitution as an incorporated political party, right? And there's a, there's a clear thinking around the need to suspend the Constitution in this country, right? And we can make a case for that, right? But that's, going, that's obviously a theoretical discussion right now, which I'm happy to explain. But this constitution and, and, and the slavish interpretation of the prescripts of this constitution have actually delivered us to a constitutional tyranny, a state of almost constitutional tyranny. Where in what respect? Well, take, for example, how many illegal foreigners are are effectively living their best life in South Africa at our expense, right? The Constitution gets the blame for that, right? So I, I feel that the Constitution is being twisted. No, that's suit, not a constitutional problem. That's uh, a kind suit, of a law enforcement issue. To suit issue, narrow aims, right? But when you look at what happened in a place like El Salvador, yes. where President Nia Bukele yes. has suspended Sus the Constitution sure. in a state of emergency, and he's brought the death rate, the murder rate, mm. down from beyond South Africa's. I think, mm. I think the, yeah. the murder rate was they way were, higher than South Africa's. They were the world champion at that point. And, uh, and it's, it's got, it's, last I looked, I mean, I'm not sure, but I think that, that gang murders are pretty much down to zero at this point. Mm. You know, the biggest, apparently the biggest boom industry in El Salvador now is tattoo removal. Mm. Um, and he achieved that through a suspension of the constitution. Um, I don't think that they're going to have to suspend the constitution indefinitely there. But... Whether you suspend the constitution in part or in whole, there's a crisis in South Africa that requires something like a state of emergency, right? Which is what happens. I mean, we, we saw the effect of that even during the state of disaster, which is not as extreme as a state of emergency. But there were a lot of constitutional rights that were suspended during the, the lockdown, during the hard lockdown. Now, I mean, I think that the window that was offered to the government during that hard lockdown um, I think it was abused, and I mean, we're profoundly worse off today because of what they did to us. Um, but it shows you that even in a constitutional state like our own, you can have a constitution, declare a window, declare a period of time where you, have, where you fix what's broken. So are you suggesting that South Africans have too many rights? That's the problem. I think that, look, I'll never say that you shouldn't have all your rights, right? But I feel that it's... But only for a time you shouldn't. I feel that those rights have, have now been taken to the extreme perversion of, of trumping all sense of responsibility. Is, is that a case of, is that a constitutional fault or a leadership fault? I think it's a leadership fault. So then if I'm that's the case, the then so, so now we've just blamed the constitution, but now we're not going to blame the constitution. I said uh, the we're going to say it's a leadership problem, abused. but then you're going to support them. You can understand why I'm, why I'm, I'm I've I'm chosen sort of, my words carefully to yes. say the constitution has been has been twisted to suit the aims 
The right. constitution is a constitution, right? You can either it, – it is what it is. It's a document. It's a, it's a, it's a rule book, right? And the question is uh, whether one applies the rule book or not. It's like I could referee a football match and not apply the rules. That doesn't mean that the rules are wrong. It means that I'm wrong. Look, that's the reason we have a constitutional court. I, mean, yes. I don't think that in the early days of the constitution, I think the idea of a constitutional court was – some would say that it was not even yeah. meant to be a permanent yeah. fixture in, in, in the fabric of our society, but it's become that now. Um, but the reason we have a constitutional court – is because there's interpretation of that document, and there there has it's it's a contested document. And take for example things like life is not easy, right? So mm. you've got the right to life on the one hand, right? Which is what what people will say. Well, you can't have a death penalty, but what happens if you if you become so extreme you, and you're just killing, 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 and you're just disrespecting someone's right to life? Why, do you, why should you continue to have the right to life, right? So I would say it's not so easy as to say, well, you just, you just insert the Constitution here on this side and, it, and all the answers like for how you should physically act just emerge by, you know, by, by some luck on the other side. This is a document so that you, has to be interpreted. Or you, or you, in, in your understanding, is a high murder rate an indication of the failure to implement the death penalty as opposed to a failure to apply laws in general? No, I mean, I, I, you could never be so simplistic as to say, well, if you, if you implement the death penalty, then there'll be no more murders. Mm. No one is saying that. But what, what I'm saying... what I'm hearing. What are you hearing? From you, you're sort of saying, well, you know, people that murder, they've deprived somebody of their right to, the li right to life. Therefore, they must be put to death. And I'm sort of thinking, well, the Constitution doesn't stop the police from doing their work. You know, taking that guy off the streets at the start, where we understand our policemen seem to be doing absolutely nothing at the moment with, uh, with a police minister who seems to have, you know, now that he's stopped pitching up at the scene of the crime, he seems to be doing absolutely nothing. I'm saying it's not a necessarily a constitutional crisis. It's a leadership crisis. Why the Constitution gets the blame, I'm not sure, and that's why I'm asking you. I don't, I don't necessarily see the reason to, as being compelling to suspend a Constitution because I don't see the government unempowered. I don't see the government's hands behind their back to enforce um, our territorial integrity, to enforce the laws as written, you know, as... So uh, there's, NGOs, there's NGOs that actually prevent you from even if they're illegal foreigners that have hijacked a building right i mean and there's any number of bracketeering issues going on there there's drugs being sold there's sex work there's i, I mean come on so, there's a thousand seven hundred so hijacked buildings in Joburg, but you can't you struggle to do anything about it because they will stop you from doing anything about it, and they'll say the so, Constitution prevents you from, from doing anything So, about it. two questions to that. Uh, firstly, which NGO stops you from applying the laws, right? And then secondly, um, do you agree with Robert Mugabe that NGOs should be banned? No, I mean, I think when Kenny said that he understands why Mugabe... I mean, Kenny's always t quoted out of context, which is, which is curious, but... Uh, when he said that he understands why Mugabe banned NGOs, he's not saying let's ban NGOs, but it's it's his way of saying to hell with these people, right? But that's not to say that we are promoting the banning of NGOs. We're not saying that we agree with Mugabe. But the reality is, well, we've got 1,700 hijacked buildings mm. in this country, mm. and people use the Constitution to enforce the tyranny who and how? of that situation upon but us. Who and how? Have you ever tried to evict someone from any property in this country? Is that a constitutional problem or is that a, a, a law enforcement problem? Is what I can't understand. I, I'm sort of looking no, at I mean, these problems and I'm a... It's the law. I, I agree the law that is it's on the side of The I, law is on the side of the illegal foreigner, the land invader, the, the building hijacker. The law helps that person to continue I, to commit crime. I, Charles, I can't for one minute believe that. because Which the, country do you live in? I live in South Africa with rampant you crime. You should get okay? out I, I know. We, what, must I go to another country? I'm saying I live <laughs> no, in no, South Africa. No, no, I think Africa you should get out the house more. I'm a fiercely patriotic South African, right? And I'd say that 
absolute hand on heart. You, you can, uh, that's me, right? I am. And I'm, I'm doing this because I want to make South Africa a better place, right? In some way, get that conversation out there. But I don't see the problem as, as a whole lot of laws protecting bad guys. I see, I, I see a whole lot of good guys supposed to be, i.e. The, the law enforcement agencies, just not doing their work. Right on the yeah. basic level, which leads to those problems down the line, and eventually you end up with a absolute social crisis of millions of foreign uh, um, people in South Africa that should have been stopped back then, you know. And now you've got a problem, and it's just not necessarily so palatable to put them all on, you know, buses and 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 take them back. There has at that point you've got a problem, which is now so bad that needs yeah, to be dealt with i don't think it needs to be dealt with necessarily it's just very outside strange. of the constitution it's just very strange when you hear people saying when you say look you've got a thousand seven hundred buildings yes that have been hijacked yeah in the city of johannesburg once the jewel in the crown right. of urban urban living in africa right I mean, apartheid being what yeah. it was but you know I if know. you just take it out you. of out of context yeah. you say that that's a good yeah. looking city right there right now it's very curious that people will say, well, there's not much you can do about the situation now because you should have dealt with it already when they were crossing the river no, or no, when they were coming in at, at whatever. No, right? that's not what I'm saying. What I'm, what I'm saying is that right now, there's a ton that one could do right now within the law. So I'm saying before one goes outside of the current laws to yeah. look for help, right? let's first try applying the laws as they're written right now. So I'm, I'm very curious, I'm very concerned, to be fair, as to the talk of saying, oh, you know, what we really need is conscription. Man, I was conscripted, right? That does you no good whatsoever. I'm not a big fan of conscription. I mean, that is, a, to me, a dumb solution to a very, um, very complex problem. It's a social problem trying to be solved you know, this sounds like drunk uncle at the Bri. Huh? Yeah, what you're missing is you guys didn't go to the army as he sits there 50 kilos over the weight and drinking a bottle of brandy every week. Do you know what I mean? It, I don't see these blunt instruments as being the solution. In the short term, they'll work. There's no doubt about it. You know what I mean? There's no doubt in the very short term, it always seemed like a great idea. The tanks roll down the middle of the street. Suddenly, there is law and order. Why? Because you've got soldiers on every corner. But that's not the country... That I want to live in. I don't know if it's the country you want to live in, and I don't think it's the country that the majority of people want to live in. I think that there's, a, you know, there's got to be a better route out. Surely. Look, you you asked me about some criticisms around the constitutional democracy. Mm. Now, I mean, every system has to be criticised. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can't. I don't know the exact quote, but I think Churchill said, "Democracy is like the least." Yeah. worst system that we've you know it's horrible but yeah. it's not as horrible it's a as, bad system but yeah. not as bad as all the others exactly right and so much the same way with the constitution so i mean if you're asking me to criticize it i'll do that mm. doesn't mean that i'm saying that we sh we shouldn't be happy to be living i'm under not a asking you to do it i'm asking you whether the patriotic alliance if, who their leader has said he would suspend the constitution those are his words not mine for a time. Okay. Right. So I'm saying, is that a party position? Because that is fundamental. What you're saying is, now you used a, a, a very, very pertinent example, which I think was very good. And that was Gayton's performance as, as mayor of Central Karoo. Here you've got an energetic guy who went out there and applied basic common sense to his position. A lot of energy, charisma, etc. And, and the, the proof is there. Great, great, tick, right? Why can that model, he didn't operate outside of the law when he did that. He operated very much within the bounds of the Constitution. All I'm saying is that what is different, other than scale, between the problem that he encountered in Central Karoo and the problem President McKenzie would encounter in the Republic of South Africa? Going to mass deport illegal yeah. foreigners, hmm. right? you are going to struggle to get that right in the current constitutional dispensation. That is... that is. Who's going to block you? Everyone that's blocking... Who? Everyone, that, Who? everyone that's blocking... I mean, Seri, for example, released a... Uh, the Socioeconomic Rights Institute mm -hmm. released a, a, a very angry statement. I think it was two pages long 
about the two days that Kenny Kunene was the acting mayor here in the city of Joburg when he went to one of these hijacked buildings and uh, tried to institute even a small measure of law and order in that space. And, you know, they, they, they barely had any of the facts. I mean, yes. half of what they're talking about isn't even factual. But immediately they were ready to run to court. And right. the city of Joburg has repeatedly lost in court when it comes to anything regarding eviction. Now, y- y- let's, let's, let's deal, for example, let's, let's look at the example of what Kenny Kunene did in central Joburg, right? Going to get a lot of support. But that is, uh, is, is, is theater, isn't it? To go to, uh, you know, and we've seen theater in many forms, you know. Obviously, Herman Mashaba was accused of theater throughout his mayoralty of Joburg of going to these buildings, trying to do these big, audacious moves, you know, when you walk in there and the guy stands there in his suit, hey, who are you, that kind of thing. It's theater. As opposed to I applying... Know how theatrical it feels to the person being grabbed. But no, okay. to one person, but to the cameras is wonderful. I mean, that looks brilliant, right? And that's going to bring everybody scurrying out. One would imagine that surely the best way to go about it is to start off applying the laws as they're written right now, the, the, the bylaws as they're written, rather than the theater. Yeah, look, you asked rather, me about the Constitution, yes. and I gave you my criticism. Right. I mean, if you had asked me, should we be applying the laws better? The answer is a resounding yes. Okay. You know, can we make the country better? By applying the laws. By applying the laws better, by actually even interpreting the laws as they probably should be interpreted, instead of, instead of pushing this narrative that you, it, it's rights above responsibilities at all costs, right? That yes, I think that it's perfectly possible and perfectly reasonable that we can run the country brilliantly. I mean, you don't need the death penalty to bring down the murder rate. You just need to improve policing. You just need to improve the courts, right? It, it, it's obvious to almost any right-thinking person Right, that you don't necessarily need the death penalty because, I mean, most of the Western world doesn't have the death penalty anymore. Right? I mean, America is an outlier mm. in that respect. Mm. And the murder rate's very low mm. you know, in, in, in the UK. I mean, if you mm. compare, yeah. in the UK, they solve something like 90% of all the murders we solve. Yeah. Um, we solve 15% of all of them, but we still solve something like six times more murders in total because we just have so many. Yes. Right? So it's obvious that just improve the way you run the country, regardless of what the constitution is or isn't doing for you, and you're going to have better results, right? So do we need to suspend the constitution under President McKenzie? So whether we do or whether we don't, Gayton is saying, Gayton McKenzie or President McKenzie is saying that that for him is a, is a solution, right? And when you look at the example of El Salvador, you can see how that actually has a positive outworking, right? So I'm saying that I don't think that it's a case of raising the alarm and saying, oh dear, it will be the end of the world if President McKenzie suspends the Constitution, right? It is one solution among many, but I think what we can all agree on is that we do need solutions, right? Um, Whether the solution is suspending the Constitution or just enforcing the law as it is meant to be enforced, is another solution, but you do need a solution. And unfortunately in South Africa, we've had all these plans, the ANCs come with plan after plan after plan, policy of policy, policy, but it's about the implementation. You know, and that's I think where we fall flat. So have a solution. The PA has brought forward what it believes is its solution. If you don't like it, vote for somebody else. If you think that we have a solution that you like, which is we're bringing God back into society, particularly bringing back God into schools. There will be conscription. The death penalty is coming back. Uh, BE is going to radically change. The land reform program is going to be very different to what it is now. You must use the land productively or you must lose the land, right? You must, um, you must make a contribution to society, right? There's a, there's a whole bunch of other policies that we can go into. But bottom line is that the PA is a fundamentally conservative party, right? That's pushing a return to norms and values that are fundamentally conservative because what's happened in South Africa is that we have veered out of control. And I mean, I'm somebody that probably comes from more of a liberal background, but I think everybody can see that we have veered so far towards rights, right? That we 
don't even know what a responsibility looks like anymore. And we are here to promote a message of saying, let's get back to some old school values because South Africa does need to return to some, some form of, uh, of strict control because we're out of control. Anybody looking at the state of South Africa right now is seeing a society that's basically spinning out of control. So the PA is here to say, we would like the center to hold again in a way that hasn't been happening for the longest time. We have no leadership. We have a, a president that's asleep at the wheel. Um, you know, he, his eyes only light up when he sees a, a buffalo or a cattle, you know, with the Ancoli horns. The rest of the time, he's out to lunch. And we're saying we are promoting a practical, um, active, conservative view that um, may not be needed forever. But you spoke about how it could work in the short term. Um, a patriotic alliance government, even for 10 years, may just be the, the smack on the side of the TV that you need to get the signal working again, you know, to get the thing, to get the thing fixed. And then you can hand it back over to uh, your sort of standard bureaucrat, right? But right now, South Africa does need someone that's going to come in with a firm fist. Gaten is that person. If you want that, vote for the PA. If you don't, it's a free world. Vote for somebody else. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you've heard what uh, the Patriotic Alliance will bring to our lives um, if you support them. Charles, thank you so much for joining us today. It's, uh, it's been nice and lively as we, as we like it on this platform. <laughs> we hope to see more from the Patri Patriotic Alliance. And, uh, you know, you guys are gonna, you're not going to go anywhere, that's for sure. So uh, let's, uh, let's keep talking. And thank you so much to everybody that joined us today. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you uh, really like us, then become uh, part of our supporters club. We've got great news coming up about a live event, which uh, you'll be seeing soon. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you on the next State of the Nation. Thank you to Charles, and thank you for joining us today.